Jen. <laughs> I am like so excited to be with you. I feel like I know you. Me too. I'm just like, you were humming or whistling. What were you doing outside of the door? I don't even know. She was, I was like, is she whistling? Or? <laughs> like, you're just, you are, I'll tell you what it is about you that drew me into human design because it, it wasn't human design. It was you. It was you because you, you seem and you feel so rooted in yourself. And I'm so attracted to being around people and surrounding myself with that type of energy because it just makes me want to continue this work of like being so grounded in who I am too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've become more grounded, but I'm mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. striving to just like feel good mm -hmm. in my own skin. Isn't it amazing? Because when you're around people like that, it you find it easier to do it yourself, right? So the more of us are all kind of doing it, it's like, it's so effortless to just get in each other's downstream now. I'm like, I'm with you. I walked in. I feel like I know you. You're yourself. I'm myself. Like, it's such a different way of interacting. Oh, it is. It gives you the permission, right? To just like settle in mm -hmm. to who you are. Yeah. And if you're energetically sensitive, I think, even if you're really good at staying yourself, it's really easy to morph around people that you feel like you kind of have to help sometimes, you know what I mean? So it's really nice if like, I'm taking care of my side of the street, you take care of your side of the street, and then we can meet like uh, where we truly are, you know? Yes. That is probably the biggest thing I'm noticing in my life right now. Wow. Is just, you know, because certain people you have been in your life for a long time, family, w whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that it's, you know, it's a lot to manage myself, my family, mm -hmm. my work, my everything. And, and to be able to understand that, like, I don't have to be that for everyone mm. anymore, which is also interesting because, I, I mean, you saw where I was yesterday, like learning about like our Enneagram and our team's Enneagram. But what's helped me understand my Enneagram more is knowing my human design. So no way. Yes. I, I mean, at least for my experience. Wow. Yeah. I actually didn't know anything about the Enneagram. So it's really interesting that you're saying that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm a three, but I have no idea what else that means or anything. Like, I don't know. You're a three. That's a, uh, a three is a... <laughs> Our team needs a three, unless <laughs> that's well, one thing we, are you <laughs> we didn't have a three, and it's a it's a very important. Okay, you're very focused on first. It's like a very grounded energy, but you like make things happen, but without like trying to make things happen. It's kind of this like effortless flow. Wow. I mean, I'm I'm really getting into all mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. How did you, your story on how you transitioned into human design, I find just, it's something I really want to highlight because there's so many people who are doing things in their life that mm. they're just not fulfilled yeah. by, or they think it's the thing that's going to bring them success. Mm -hmm. Can, oh, yeah. Can you bring us back and just share like how this became your world? It's exactly what you said. I spent my 20s, um, I was running a food business because I grew up in a family where my dad and his brothers and their dad, like they all work for themselves. And it was all about like the hustle and the grind and they're English, right? So it's that kind of very East End, like, oh, you just get up and you scrap in the morning and the whole thing. So that was like my conditioning, right? right. And so for me, I thought that that was the way to not only get success, but also to kind of belong and to get like validation and love and all those sorts of things. And I thought if I just do what they're doing, I'll get the same result, right? And um, it was only when to be completely frank, I was doing that for six, seven years. And I was doing gluten-free, sugar-free, da, 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 before it was a thing in England anyway. And then there were girls who started when I was five years in and they zoomed past me. And that was a wake-up call for me of like, hold on a second. 
something's not right here for me because I've spent so much time doing this and it's still not happening. Mm. And it was only that that really got me to look at, maybe this just isn't the fit, you know? Even though my mind is telling me it's the fit, even though my mind is telling me that's the quickest way to be successful or to get what I want, there's maybe a different route. And it was when my teacher basically the first time I met the person that taught me human design and he did my human design and he explained to me, this is the way you're supposed to operate. This is the way you're supposed to work. And I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but it's just like when someone says something and you just knew that that was what you secretly wanted that like to be. And I was like, this has got to be something. And then um, I started doing readings for people on the side and just for fun. And then a friend of mine was like, you have to do this for work. Like, you have got to do this. But bear in mind, this is nine years ago. Right. Spiritual industry was not cool. Mm. It was not kind of as big as it was back then. So I was literally thinking I was going to be wheeled off, you know, to the side of society, like (laughs) in a chair, like doing, if I just start doing readings of people, what's going to happen? I'm going to become like, they're going to throw me in a cellar. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, that sort of, anyway. (laughs) So, um. I started doing readings for people on the side, but very closeted. I charged $85. And then my wait list like, grew to a year and a half. And I was like, hold on a second. I'm making more money doing this like weird closeted thing on the side than I am in my food business. Like something's about to happen. And so then that was when I was like, okay, well, I'm just really unfulfilled doing this thing that's my official job. And it was hard to give up. Like, it's so easy to tell people, like, do the things that light you up or go for the thing that is bringing you joy. But it's really hard because it's a death. It is. It's a death of, I was in the department stores. I'd gotten myself to a certain place. You then feel like you have something to lose once you've built it up. And, you know, those things are really hard and they're they're sort of like a grief to your ego, especially. So then, um, but then after that, once I made that switch is when I feel like I've been carried ever since. Like, I really just feel like doing those few bold things in favor of who you really are Mm -hmm. um, is what really pays off. And it is those like few very kind of big steps towards backing your real self versus what society tells you to be. Right. Um, that that's where I started because with my conscious mind, I could never have been like, oh, I'm going to have an app. I'm going to have a book. I'm going to have training courses. It's going to be this kind of business. Type of business I always wished as a kid I would have. And I never knew that this form would be the thing that would bring it to that. So you, you know felt I mean? like you always wanted this. I always wanted to be financially independent. I always wanted to have my own business. I always wanted to say like help the world you know what I mean I always wanted to like make an impact and do something and it was just didn't come to me through the ways that I insisted it coming to me through same it came through the things that like were my soul's joy you know same yeah literally the exact same can you share for anyone who is like what are you talking about (laughs) what (laughs) in the world because shockingly enough when I started really talking about it more, there was a big majority of people who know their human design, have been, you know, really interested in this world or this way of living. But there's still a lot of people who are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you break it down Mm -hmm. and then also share the different human designs? Yeah. Okay. So... The reason why there's a lot of people that don't know about human design is it was only formulated 36 years ago. So unlike astrology and the chakra system and all those things that have been around for such a long time, human design, I don't know if you know this, it was formulated in Ibiza. I know this from your podcast. Oh, fine. Okay. (laughs) I listen to every (laughs) single episode of your podcast. Thank you. Oh, I'm like so much. A (laughs) diehard. And I love your co-host. Taylor. Taylor's great. She's amazing. I know. You guys are, it's, it's great. Oh, yeah. She's a good, she's a good egg. She's a good egg. Um, so yeah, it was, so it was formulated in Ibiza and, um, the idea is that we're actually swimming like every place you're in has an energy Mm -hmm. and if you believe that your soul comes here with an intention with a plan then it's not such a stretch to believe that it's going to then choose the perfect like starting point in its life to kind of as a launch pad right so the time and place that you're born has a certain energy 
And if we can measure that energy, we can measure who you came here to be, the, the, the kind of core essence of who you are, because it's a match to the time and place that you were seated in, right? The place you came through. And so human design is basically a modality that says we can measure who you are as a person and how you're supposed to operate. It's not going to tell you you're going to have three kids or you're going to move home in the same way that astrology does. But it's going to say to you, this is who you are. And so therefore, this is your custom manual for life. And why I think that resonated with me and so many people is because all these spiritual concepts we're trying to work on, right? Like being our real selves and, you know, surrendering to the universe and living in the flow. I spent so much time wondering how to do those things myself. Like, what does it actually look like in my real life? And it wasn't until I found human design, which is like, do this and this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. This is the way your energy works. This is how you're meant to function. It just got rid of all that white noise and it just really grounded it for me. And I think that's what we're really resonating with now is like, okay, let's actually use this to change our lives rather than just spend time learning, which we all love to do, right? But we then need the manual. So human design is like, this is your custom manual to be who you need to be, who you came here to be. And then, um, you know, actually what's the most freeing part of it is that you can get out of this overthinking, over strategizing, over controlling so much because it's almost like your body is a machine. It knows how to operate itself. It knows how to drive itself towards your destiny. If you just reiterate, it's like rinse and repeat, do this, do this, do this. And then you don't have to know where it's going. You can just be in what they call passenger consciousness, which is being able to watch the movie of your own life as it unfolds, which is what we want to do. We want to watch this whole adventure kind of happen, right? Right. Um, And then also what's cool is that the mind is then free to become a genius at the outside world because the mind is supposed to be looking around us, learning, ahas, formulating, observing, but instead we're turning it inwards on ourselves and thinking, yes. Feeling anxious and... Yes. When we don't Spiraling. need to do that. Exactly. Right. Because we're using our mind inwards rather than outwards. But the body has its own wisdom that it knows how to make its own decisions. It knows how to always, um, you know, make the aligned choice. It knows what it wants if we know how to listen to it. So. Okay. I, I mean, I feel like it makes so much sense <laughs> for me, but understanding the different human designs mm-hmm. and then giving a little bit, maybe just like, A little bit in each bucket Mm -hmm. so people can start maybe energetically or intuitively thinking about what design they are. When you, did you know about the types before you knew your, before you looked yours up? No. So you didn't guess what you were before you, you just took, you just did the thing. Okay. So um, just for your audience to know, this is not like a personality test where you answer questions, you put in your birth information, your time, your place, and then... um, then it will tell you what you are. And there's many, many different subcategories within a design. But the sort of top line, the place where you start is your energy type. Because think about it, if you're not using your energy towards the right things in your life, you're going to just waste so much energy and then you're not going to get the most bang out of your buck from what you're putting in. So that's the place where you really want to start people off is like, how do you use your energy? And you kind of already know there's different people that function differently. There's some people that are really full on and then they need to like, chill after that and then you don't see them for ages right right there's certain people who are more kind of subtle and soft there's people who are more chameleon like so we'll get into that so you have five energy types and these are not personalities they're just how you use your energy so um you have generators manifestors manifesting generators um projectors and reflectors so we'll start with generators that's you're a generator right yeah i knew you were a generator straight away did you yeah Um, because I'll tell you why, because generators, their main sort of like task on the planet energetically is to cultivate so much life force inside of them that it spills out of them. And what happens when that spills out of you because you've made such an excess is it lifts everybody else up. That's why they're called generators because they generate life force for the rest of the planet. And so their aura is very open, welcoming and enveloping because think about once you've generated this energy, it needs to be able to draw in the right people to then spill into, right? And the amazing thing about generators is that 
once they have lifted somebody else up, they don't always see how they've done it because you don't see how I was before I walked in. Okay, you heard me whistling today, so that was a good day. But like, you know, if I was down and then I picked up your life force and whatever, you wouldn't necessarily see the before and after, right? Right. You don't see how many people that you lift up and have an effect on. But when the only condition is you have to be in your joy to create that life force. And so when you're in your joy, it creates such a spillover and it draws everyone to you. So think about like Oprah's a generator. Think about Jennifer Lopez as a generator. Like even if you don't love her songs, you just like can't get enough of her, right? Right. Like that's that's the magic of a generator. Beyonce's a generator. Beyonce's a generator too, exactly. So they're just like these people that have just this like juicy, drawing you in kind of energy, right? Um, But the biggest sort of, I guess, conditioning that they have that they get, you know, sort of, I guess, um, impacted with when they're young is that, you know, it's like a well done for doing something you didn't want to do. Like it's your duty to do this or it's good to sacrifice yourself. And so this is the huge conditioning piece that generators have to get over is like, actually, you're not doing anyone any favors when you're doing something you don't want to do because you can go through the motions, but net net, your energy wasn't there to like lift the person up. And that's what people actually want from you, even though they don't know that's what they want from you. So it's really interesting because like the whole thing with them is like, it can be as simple as doing your joy. And actually it's your duty to do your joy. I mean, it's wild how much this is like me as a person, (laughs) but it's funny because I, like, I think about how I felt as a person, like even before I I started doing everything that I'm doing, it was intuitively because I I knew nothing about this, but it was like getting to the mat and staying consistent. And then it started to like turn on my, my inner light. Like I started to become so aware of how joyful and just like excited I was to talk about like everything that was making me see things differently. And and like, that is how this started. Like mm. it started from me staying consistent with connecting with that feeling mm. because it, it wasn't always that way. And it's very interesting now because I told you before, you know, I think just in life, I'm in a, a little bit of a, I guess we're always in a transitional phase. Like <laughs> you can always say that, but like some transitions are bigger than others. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like right now I've I've been in this place where I'm like, why am I feeling this way? And picking up your book and reading your book, like my life manual before <laughs> bed every single night. You guys need this book. <laughs> Literally, I'm obsessed with this book. Oh, I really mean that. Um, thank you. It, has just given me the the confidence in like not feeling bad mm. about like almost allowing myself to like be happy all the time. Like it's because you feel bad, you know, like I think it's a childhood thing where I'm like, mm-hmm. is it? I, am I too happy? Am I like, you know, do, should I tone it down? And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, this is actually how I literally generate everything mm-hmm. in my life. And when I'm not feeling that way, there's n- nothing. Yeah. I'm just like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And then because your system is literally, and you're ruled by your sacral, right? Your gut, that, that sacral very. chakra. And that's the place where life force gets created. And so when you're not stoking that fire, it's literally like the energy gets snuffed out, you know? And that's what you're saying is like that kind of feeling of like lifelessness or slowness or dullness or any of those things. And so then how beautiful to realize like, obviously for yourself as well, but that, you know, your joy is your duty, you know? It's my duty. Like, it's just, it's been like refreshing. Yeah. And and just given me this like, okay, where are you spending your time? Mm-hmm. How are you feeling mm-hmm. during the day? Like, are you giving your attention to things that maybe I need to shift off my plate? Like it's right. it's been really eye-opening and it's like yeah. it's it's changing my life. Like it's just, it's it really is. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm so, I was so excited to have you here because I think for so many people out there are walking around feeling lifeless. Mm-hmm. You can feel it. Yeah. And 
to share that there's like other ways of doing things yeah. is literally like it's it's why I'm I'm like I know can we just please show life through a different lens I know and it's like we really just have one like we need to just go for the gold and not because you know we're more special than others but just because we're all special you know and you never know what kind of edge of life you're going to kind of push and grow for other people and what's going to be possible if everyone just iterates in their like radically different directions like all the possibilities you can create but we just we need to be the permission slip for ourselves because no one else is going to be like this is going to work right. and that's where it's complicated because the way someone put it for me once which was so amazing is like you know the bad news is your um falling through space with no safety net but the good news is there is no bottom you know, mm. and it's just one of those things that the more you can kind of push it at a pace that feels doable for you, but just do things slightly differently, you know, each day, like it's where the, you feel. It's that. Yeah. It's the slightly different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this like quit your job and mm -hmm. move to another, you know, mm -hmm. country. I think it is in the the check-in points with yourself yeah. like in the morning I'm like oh how am I feeling I'm feeling mm -hmm. really drained why am I feeling this way well it's because you are giving your energy towards life-sucking thing that does nothing for you yeah yeah and for generators I always say what's really helpful is to almost observe yourself like if you were having like an outer body experience would you see your body in that moment go like this like expansive and like perk up and get excited or are you kind of like this because as long as you're like this your mind will talk you into it it'll be like no but you liked this or no you remember this oh. is something that everyone tells you you should do you know and we oh, all do I that do. this this guy is like the best spin doctor there is right so um it's just one of those things where like, unless you're viscerally excited and it's not because that's your choice. What is your joy is not designed by you. Like that's just, ran it's not random. It's designed by the universe. And so it's like, listen, if you're not excited by it, that means I don't want you to be doing this. Like if everyone is functioning well together and there's like a perfect allocation of resources amongst all human beings, stop trying to do jobs that are not yours. Oh, that is so good. Okay. I really have some reboot. And you know, <laughs> but the crazy part is what you find is when you're, when you're brave enough to say no and not because, oh, well, I don't want to do things that, and kind of assuming that no one wants to do them, either you'll find someone who would die to do them or there won't be a need for those things anymore, or you never know who you make space for, who that's their dream. And right. you've just gotten out of their way, right? Because we're all just bumping into each other as well. So it's like, you get back in your stream, you make so much space and opportunities for other people. And it's just like, the more you do it, the more you don't just know it from your mind, but you see, and you're like, I mean, even me to this day, I'm like, oh my God, this is so true. Like, what are what? you? I'm a projector. projector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just like, every time I look, I'm like, oh, this works. Right. <laughs> every single day I'm messaging. No, it really works. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. Wait, there's yeah. one thing you always, I think it's like the opening line on your podcast and it's in your book as well. I have to read it because it's like that one thing that just, we're all so different, but we're all walking around like we, like, like we operate in the same way. We are not one dimensional like there is not this one way of us doing things and, and it even makes me think back to like school was a struggle for me I literally thought that I wasn't smart that I was never going to mount to anything in my life because I wasn't mm -hmm. recognized for anything in school other than like being good at gym wow. which all makes sense now <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy I swear but I was like what am I gonna you know you yeah just, what am I gonna do with that yeah and that's where it starts, though, is like shutting down those things that come easy to you because we don't think we can't see with our minds where they're going to lead us. And yet, look, I'm going to chill. It's like, look, where it's where it's amounted to is like the things that were planted in you when you were born, the things you did so easily. Right. It's I magical. Mean, it's magical. OK, tell us more. OK, so manifestors. <laughs> so manifestors. Manifestors are... Um, they are like, OK, think about like Gloria Steinem, J.K. Rowling. Think about people who historically manifestors were always kings and queens of countries and they're always people that conquered countries okay so they're really the people that are just like so full on when they have this like urge to do something they're like going at 200 percent, and there's like it's just it's a whirlwind like you just there's no one getting in the way like when they're there and when they feel like they're overcome by this urge they're gonna create something but 
the thing about manifestors is that they're at 200% and then they need to be at 20%. And so they're very kind of fits and starts type of energy in terms of their creativity and their bursts. And they have different kind of very different auras and generators where yours is open and inviting. Manifestors are very shielded, very selective. And you notice them as soon as they walk in the room, you feel them even if they're trying to be kind of unnoticeable, mm -hmm. right? So they're people who are really here to kind of make the first impact on people, but then they're supposed to kind of pull back and let the chips fall where they may. So they're not like how you as a generator are very like day in, day out devoted and then it compounds and it's this like dance with you and your craft. With manifest is like, I'm going to do this and then I'm just going to let it just do the thing it's supposed to do in the world and I'm not going to stay with it type of thing, right? So they just put stuff out and then it just does what it needs to do. Right. And I'm so trying to think of who else mm, that I can uh, think of. I'm trying to think of some other examples. I mean, Adele's really my favorite okay, example because... Got it. She's like, and I heard her once on an interview say like, there's a reason why my albums are called 18, 21 and 25 because you don't see me in between those years. Like, you know, and I was like, wow, right. that's so, because no one would say she's less successful because she's not honoring her energy. In fact, that's what makes you, mm. helps you be successful, right? Right. But yeah, she's made such a huge impact. And also she's a good manifester because she doesn't care about what people, she's not here trying to like be liked by everyone. Manifestors are actually not here to be likable, but that's their biggest conditioning because they're born with such big impactful auras that it's like most parents think that being a good parent is trying to control or tell the kid how to be and a manifest is already kind of born being the biggest energetically in the family and so um you know what they spend their time doing their conditioning to a manifesto is like be small be likable people please get permission from other people before you go and do that random urge right and so then they spend their entire lives um having to basically decondition from this wound of other people have to approve of me and instead what happens is when i go off and do my thing they get met with more approval than they could even have tried to manufacture. So I say to them, for example, it's like, if you're the driver of a train, you just stop at the station and whoever wants to get on your train to get to where you want to go, just jumps on and comes with you. You don't go out onto the platform and say, who wants to come? Where does everyone want to go? What would be the happiest thing? Like, then you're just, you just have to go. Mm. So that's manifestors. And so they're really the people, again, they definitely cannot do a nine to five because, well, no one can do a nine to five, especially in today's world, but that's not really set up for how much we're changing. But they're really people who, when they're on, they're on. So my sister's a manifestor, for example. And even with her workouts, she's like going and doing hit for two weeks and then she's not moving, <laughs> you know? And even that is in alignment, right? right? That works for her. Yeah, because they either have so much energy or they're like in hiding mode. Like they're just like dead to the world or they're like out and no one can not see them. They spend so much of their time trying not to be seen and trying not to be kind of, you know, pushing up against people's edges. Do you know Cleo Wade? She's another manifesto. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she's I another good one. I can see that too. Mm-hmm. So that's manifestors. And then you have manifesting generators. And they're kind of a hybrid between generators and manifestors where they have the life force of generators, but they have the kind of spontaneity energetically of manifestors. So they're the kind of like multi-hyphenates of the world. So they're the Tony Robbinses, the Angelina Jolie, the Jessica Albers, like they somehow combine loads of different things and somehow make sense of it, even though you would never think that adopting babies and going speaking at the UN and directing and writing and acting, you know, you're like, you would never say to someone that's going to work out for you. You'd be like, <laughs> no, you have to pick one, right? <laughs> um, or they do many different things in one lifetime. So they like switch loads of different things up. And so the thing about manifesting generators, their biggest conditioning is that um, it's like, well, you can't do loads of different things. You have to make sense of yourself before you start. You can't just follow your gut. You have to kind of shunt it into this kind of more linear format. Um, and the other thing with them is that they master things really quickly. And so with them, they're like, okay, I'm going to try and learn the harp. Okay, got what I needed to get out of that in two weeks. So they want to finish because they're not lit up by it anymore. They're done. They learned the skill or the lesson or whatever it was they wanted. But the world then says, no, you have to stick with things. You can't quit while you're ahead. What do you mean you want to close your business? You just started it six months ago, right? But because they are supposed to pivot more, they get the things they need to get quicker. So they kind of get so set back by telling themselves to kind of slow it down. 
Mm. to stick with things, to commit, overcommit to stuff, right? So they're the people that want to be going in all these different directions. And the world is saying, no, no, pick one lane, slow it down and stay in it. I hate when people say pick a lane or like yeah. stay in your lane. Yeah. So that's really manifesting generators for you. And they, um, like generators, they they do have that strong gut. And so they do create the energy. But it's different because you create your energy to lift other people up. Mm-hmm. And manifesting generators are kind of just like lifting the the sort of like, mm, how do I say this? Like the collective, more impersonal, this is what's possible type of thing. And this is my whirlwind. You know what I mean? And right. like watch what I'm, the craziness of what I'm doing. And then it's just like really fun to see people do, you know, right. all those weird random paths, you know? I'm thinking of people who I'm like, they're definitely... Do you know what your husband is? Have you looked him up? I, I don't know what he is. Oh. I need to look him up. Yeah. Yes. I want to... I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was one. A manifesting generator? Yeah. I think that or a generator. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm terrible at guessing though, so I you'll believe tell Jason's me. a manifesting generator. I think he was. Yeah. I can't remember. Which, like, that whole thing. I'm like, yeah. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and then you have projectors. And projectors are, uh, they've only been around for 200 years. And if you think about before then, we were always trying to, like, learn the rules of the game on this plane, like, this material plane. Like, how do you get food? How do you survive? Like, that's what humans were tasked with before 200 years ago. Like, just the basics of how do you survive? Um and something amazing happened in 1871 um, where we entered into a different era where now it's about like, okay, now we know the foundations. Now we get to like create and be in our creativity as humans and like express that kind of divine innovation through us, right? And so to give the manifestors generators and manifesting generators a little bit of like help, there was projectors that were... Um, born or created where their job is really not to think about like what they're going to do with their lives, but it's actually about how do I see that if you need to get from A to B, how can I lend you an eye that helps you get from A to B even better than, you know, you just give you like a different vantage point basically. So projectors are really the people who they're obsessed with like an efficiency or a system or seeing something in a slightly different way or reinterpreting something, a perspective, a lens. But they're here to, um, I guess, share that with people um, and not so much think about what they're doing, what they're achieving. And that takes care of itself like it does with all of us. Like everything else takes care of itself when you do the thing that's hard for you or get out of your own way. And so projectors often obsess about being successful and try to do it the way they see everyone else doing it. Like moving through the world and expending their batteries and whatever. And a projector is actually supposed to be like, hold on a second here's how I can help you get from your place to your place. And so I don't have to keep up with you pace wise because we can't. But if I help you, then, then, you know, it's like, then I'm living my purpose. Right. right? So all projectors um, can see something very specific that they are here to share with other people that helps other people. But um, their biggest conditioning is like, I, I'm slower than everybody else. Like I need to keep up. I need to be able to prove how hard I'm working. So I was telling you about my food business. Like I was like waking up at 6 a.m. doing CrossFit, like doing all my own deliveries, like and validating myself on that. And so my biggest deconditioning has been like, um, you know, you you physically can't do that, right? And so you have to run at your own pace and you actually see that you're, you'll be more successful that way. Now, I also will say that the, we've all been conditioned to work too much. So it's not like, oh, pr- it's often misinterpreted. Like projectors get a free ride to sit back and chill and do nothing, right? Like we still have to do work, but it's in a different way. And also everyone needs to be working in a way that, you know, either brings you joy or is from an urge or is multi-directional or whatever, right? So it's a permission slip for everybody. Um, and so projectors, the thing about projectors though, is they often grow up because they do have a vantage point. They grow up super bossy or they want to tell everyone else what to do. And the thing is, is if I try to tell someone, if I think someone um, that I want to help, like let's say for example, I saw someone on the street and I would want to give them something like a human design tip, it's going to completely backfire if I try to give it to everyone or impose it on people. So a big part of being a projector is about waiting until people come to you, mm. which is difficult in this world, right? Because the world is like, have a plan, reach out, da, 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 da. And that's only correct for manifestors, funny enough. Wow. So you have to wait as a generator and manifesting generators, you have to wait until you've seen something in front of you and you've gotten physically a yes to do it. 
instead of do it from the mind. A hundred percent. It never works for me. Yes. If I act any way, but from that strong gut intuitive feeling. Yes. And so even you are waiting in a sense, you are waiting because you have to wait until your gut has been tickled by something right? before making the action. You can't be going moving from the mind. No, I can't because I get so consumed by it too. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't, there's zero flow when I mm-hmm. live in that space. Exactly. One thing you shared about a projector that I loved and I think is so important is you said you like love to sleep in or mm-hmm. you like you don't wake up early anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's clearly just like <laughs> it's worked with your energy field, which <laughs> I'm so jealous because I'm like there's a part of me that just like really just wants to sleep mm-hmm. all day. But I I do feel the most energy and like burst of energy when I wake up early. Mm. Mm-hmm. I guess I think that also be parts. I mean, it's very um it's also very depends on your gifts as well. So we can look, I mean, I haven't seen your chart, but we can look yes. and see like someone was telling me the other day, like, oh, I'm such an extreme person. Is that being a generator? And I was like, no, I think that's because you have gift 15. So even within that, like I was saying, it's not like a personality test being your energy type, but with energy types with you, for example, um, you have a certain battery that you get given for the day and you have to use that battery to feel like you've like done the day and to feel like satisfied with the day. I have to. And then once you've spent that battery, you can easily fall asleep. I'm done. There you go. Yes. Which like, you're so lucky. <laughs> I feel bad though, because Noah is someone who turns on at night and he like comes in. I literally like last night had like my legs up the wall, the sleep mask on my forehead <laughs> and my human design book. And I'm just like, you literally have five minutes of my time. But not in a mean way. Like I'm yeah. just like, I need to be in bed at this time. Yeah. Or else it throws me off. Wow. And when you're done, you're out. That's it. Done. Dead to the world. <laughs> With everything and everyone and every task. <laughs> I love that. And when I'm done at a party, I'm out. Like I just, mm-hmm. I... Yeah. yeah, you've got to, you've got to. I've got to go. I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, so I need like, I mean, I take like nine, 10 hours. I wake up at 11 in Ibiza. I know. You guys. I know. Sometimes later. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, I mean, that's also, I, I'll say Ibiza because if I say Ibiza right now, everyone will know I'm just like trying to say it the way you're saying it. <laughs> it sounds so beautiful. I still so don't know beautiful. how to say it though. <laughs> I, I mean, you live there now. We need to get there because I'm enamored by that story too. Mm-hmm. It's the best. Let's leave out, let's not leave out reflectors. Reflectors. Okay. Very important. So reflectors are 1% of the population. Wow. Yeah. A um, Lauren Bostick is one and so is Jordan do you know Jordan um younger the balanced yes. blonde yes love them Sandra all. Bullock is one uh Fyodor Dostoevsky was one basically reflectors are the ones they as a type have the kind of least in common with each other because they're such chameleons that's Lauren so think about their energy is completely open. Like, you know how you have like that strong gut and I'm sure you have loads of other things going on inside of you. They don't have one energy center that's like kind of consistently powering them. So everything, they're like an open sponge to the world. And so the reason why they're called reflectors is if they're not identifying with everything they're picking up, they can actually just show you what you are because it's like bouncing off them. If they're absorbing it and trying to become that way and trying to become like you, it goes skew with, right? Mm. But if they're just staying completely neutral and just allowing themselves to like ride off other people's like, oh, how fun it is to be more like this around Melissa and like how I feel when I'm with this person. And neither of those things are more my identity, but they're just experiences that I get to have. That's when you meet like an incredible, like if you meet a person who knows that they're a reflector and they've been working on it for years, the stuff they can tell you about yourself is crazy. Really? Yeah. And you know that expression of like, oh, what you see in others is what you see in yourself. It's true, but it's even more in a reflector. So what I often say to people, if you're lucky enough to know one, like name the three qualities that you like label them as and then turn them in, like turn them to yourself. Oh. Yeah. Because it's a really powerful exercise. That's um, really with powerful. Them. Yeah. I'm thinking of Lauren, who, who I discovered you through really was Lauren. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think it was the first time I... I had heard of you, but it was the first time I listened to you. And I was like... It was on their podcast. Yes. Oh, wow. But I was like, first of all, like your energy, your your accent. It was just like everything. I was like, I need more of her. 
And here we are. Here we are. I mean, I've been saying I need more of you since 2018, 19. Can't believe you do my workout. <laughs> I mean, 17 minute power booty flow is like, can I tell you, it's more than just a workout. It's like there's certain things you just need to like put yourself through when you're having a bad day and you just need to like rinse and repeat and know it's going to get you to a certain place. That 17 minute booty is like, okay, maybe everything's feeling like rubbish, but at least my bum is going to be lifted. <laughs> And Wait, then you send it like fast and you know, and you're that's the one where you go like we're gonna we jump right into it, guys. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes, we're jumping right into the day. <laughs> that's it. I've been doing that more, Dylan's always like, just jump in. <laughs> no more grounding moments. I feel like the grounding moment is is selfishly a lot for for me to tap into my like intuitive. Mm. Like just gut because when I step on the mat, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and, and people you can are, tell. Really? Mm -hmm. And such a good, in the best way. It flows through. Like, I'm like, I mean, I have an idea. Like today I was like, I have no clue what I want to do. I don't want to do it because I really didn't want to work out. But I, I like do my thing. I say my prayer and then I'm just, it goes. That's amazing. That's your channeling. That's me to a T. Yeah. And the thing about when we talk about channeling, it's like, it doesn't come through the mind again. So the mind thinks it knows how to be, you know, in its gifts and good at stuff and whatever. But actually, when you get the mind out of the way, you don't actually have to work so hard to be gifted at something. Like we're all genius level at something. Right. But it comes through your body, not your brain. It comes through my body physically. I mean, it makes me think of this event that we did. Like we put on this big event. I think it was last year in Brooklyn. And there were 300 people coming. And I just remember like sitting in my room before and I was like, should I have prepared? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, are you sure everyone's coming? Like I was like, did everyone RSVP? And everyone's like, Melissa, like look on, like there's a roar of people. And I was like, I thought those were runners. And it was like, it was just so crazy because I started to second guess myself Mm. and like my own gifts. And I just remember walking away from that experience feeling like I need to do more of that. Like that's where I'm like meant to be Mm. because it brings me back home to like my soul, you know, and it's not like I'm trying or this. Mm. And yeah, it was a real wake me up moment of like, wait a minute, like while I love everything I'm doing, like there was just something about the moment of being there and just like totally being in the flow of of speaking and yeah it like grabbed me yeah and it's it's so easy for us isn't it to see someone like Coldplay on stage and you can tell there's like some kind of divine movement through them when they're singing a song oh yeah but there is that in all of us when we're doing something that is like not just the obvious gifts like being creative and artistic and having athletic prowess or being a genius at tech right like there's genius at flower arranging there's genius at you know basically any corner of any piece of life mm-hmm. if you, but it's about you taking it to the stratospheric level that you can by giving it the energy and dancing with it right so you could have you took it to this level not because pilates is the thing to do to become successful or no. because of you know you did a certain way so everyone should do it it's because of that match and that you followed it and you just kept on giving it energy and that's what takes something big or small right it's right. like the energy that you bring to it Yes, And I think that's what's so fascinating is like whatever small, random, uncool thing you're into, please go and do that and don't do the five things that have been like given to us on the menu. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what gives me like chills in the morning is like, oh my God, imagine if like, how would I do flower arranging if that was my passion? You know, like what would I do with it? You know? (laughs) Well, something you just said before we started, it, it brought up like this, maybe this way I've been feeling about social media. And I think a lot of it is because of where I'm at in life. I I think my age has something to do with it. I I think turning 40, I just, not that you are your age, but things change and you change. And I've just gotten in this, I've been in this insecure space with social media where I'm like, I felt like this was just like second nature to me. I was so in my groove. And then have this like big aha moment where I'm like, 
Well, you're not because you're so focused on what everyone else is doing and what's working for everyone else and like TikTok and Gen Z and like, wait, I'm not like, mm. I don't get, you know, and, mm-hmm. and just feeling so knocked out of alignment yeah. with what gets me excited about yeah. social media. I think this is people's so, biggest hang up. So key. You know, what you've hit on is so, um, such a big piece because there's obviously and it's great that there's so much talk about like the stuff we have to undo from childhood. Human design is basically about deconditioning all the ways you've been told to be instead of being who you came here to be. And there's such an emphasis on childhood and, you know, early life and stuff. But we forget that we are being conditioned every single day in our current life. I know. And to just put the blinkers on so that you can just watch whatever would naturally come out of you in a very unthought through kind of way. That's like, honestly, if the world is going to change so much in the next, especially three, four years, that the best thing you can do is preserve that gold inside of you, which is like completely organic from nowhere. You haven't said it because you've heard it. Someone else say it before. You're just like, where did that come from almost? Yeah. Because it came from from you, from source, from your higher self, whatever you want to call it. And to preserve that kind of originality is going to be the number one value add that you will have to the world, Mm -hmm. you know, because all the kind of being robotic that we that we do is going to be replaced by actual robots, right? So literally, we have to stay original and stay on top of our game and go to these weird random corners that, and so, I mean, I'm the same as you. Like I followed like 200 people on, on Instagram and I don't have TikTok because I'm like, I just want to preserve my mind's like originality. Right. Because otherwise you just feel like, you end up saying stuff that you've heard before or it's just like or like doing it because like that works for so and I'm just like that is so not me why am I in this place but it I'm in this place because I I believe I've been spending a lot of my energy doing other things that are not necessarily Mm. to the best of like my my Mm. gifts my potential and and what lights me up totally like yeah I have to be lit up I know. And that's why I like when I love something, like I just like I am so like I just yeah. like was <laughs> running here to be here with you because yeah. it's it just gets me so excited to know that there's like other what's the word? There's other resources. There's other things that we can start to break down to like break these walls within ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, I really believe that things come into the world when the world is ready for them. So I think there's a reason why human design has only been around for 36 years, because that's that's the time we were ready for it. You know, a few days before I was born. I was just thinking like, wow, 36 years, like I was so young. It was literally, it was formulated like a couple of weeks before I was born. Isn't that crazy? No, it's not. I feel like you are the person who's meant to inspire this way of living into people's lives. It's freaky. And your book is really like your book is written in the exact tone that you speak, which is so easy to di- to digest and to comprehend mm. because sometimes in the spiritual world, I get things, but then when I see sit with a book I'm like Mm -hmm. what and Mm -hmm. I have to go but I've it's just there's such a flow and and the way that you bring it to light because yeah you're meant to make it accessible for people I really and thank you for saying that because I think my journey to spirituality was like spending my whole 20s consuming so much spiritual content and doing feeling exactly the same way that you're saying of like I get it, but I also don't get it. And therefore, am I dumb? Like, am I getting this wrong? Like, what am I doing? Is everyone else around there, like, out there surrendering? And I'm just, like, not understanding. (laughs) How the hell do you surrender? (laughs) Like, like, the jig is up. Do you know what I mean? And so one of the big things for me, funny enough, speaking of, like, doing things your own way, like, there's a piece in the front of the book where it says, like, this book is written in a more colloquial way than books are written or whatever. And we had to put that in because I really was very um, strong about not changing the way that it was worded. And I was like, I know it's sometimes a bit English. I know sometimes it's a bit American and there's no like rhyme or reason to how, but that's just how I talk. Right. And so 
I'm sorry that it doesn't fit into a format of normal books, but I want it to feel like I'm sitting next to you and like that there's a warmth there and mm. that there's like, it's a hug, you know, like I'm writing it for my 22 year old self who didn't understand any of this stuff. Oh, you know? I literally just got this like <laughs> warmth and this whole feeling in my body. No, because that is exactly how I feel about who I am as a teacher. And I have had so many people challenge me in this space that I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm not a Pilates teacher. And I'm like, first of all, how dare you tell me who who I am and like how I am meant to share my gift with the world. Like Mm -hmm. there is no one way of doing things. And I'm so sick and tired of these haters out there because unfortunately that is what it is. Trying to bring other people down because Mm -hmm. maybe they're not clear on what their human design is and they don't know what their (laughs) gifts are and they're trying to do something because it works for someone else. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If everyone did know their gifts, then it kind of frees you to not feel like you have any, like, okay, you know your arena. You want to hear a crazy story there? I would love to. Okay. This is a a full-on testimonial. So before I did your workouts, I did a more intense workout (laughs) and um, there's mirrors in the class. And um, I, I, I went this morning, I went this morning with one of our mutual friends. Oh, okay. Um, and I was there and I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm telling you, I was like, I've seen myself in these mirrors a thousand times. And I think I genuinely, it's crazy. I look so good <laughs> in this mirror. <laughs> I was like... Wow. And I, I I swear to you this morning, I said to myself, because we all have that voice inside. I was like, Jenna, you can never, ever, this is like no more thinking that you ever are having like a day of looking bad, like whatever. This is, this is this. And that's because for the last four years, I've been doing only Pilates and walking. And before I couldn't even keep up with that class today. I was like, this is like, tort- this is actual torture. <laughs> torture. My head was about to spin off my body. Like my adrenals were free. <laughs> No, I but know. Yeah. I did the same thing. I did that for years. But it works. Look at I this. I mean, you look insane. <laughs> I like, when you this walked in, you. I was like, this oh, is my, you, baby. <laughs> honey, that is you. That is all you. This is 17 minute power. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's crazy because yeah. I, like, everyone is like, what cardio do you do? And I'm like, I, I'm not the person who's pounding away at cardio. I did that. That Mm -hmm. did not work for me. And not to say that you can't even, you know, do my workouts and do your cardio because it it is all, it's, it's very specific Mm -hmm. for all of us. But I think what, like where I get so much joy from being able to sit here with you and like talk about this and share this with everyone is that it, like, there's just certain ways for all of us and it all looks so different and it can feel so different and it can, you know, like I look at some of my friends doing certain workouts, but it works Mm -hmm. for them. And there's no, like, there's no answer other than it just works. Yeah. It just works. And like, that's how I felt when I started going with it. And I was like, I mean, I'm blending these and like, that wasn't popular, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, doing yoga and Pilates, like that wasn't something people were doing. People weren't really teaching as much online. At all. Right. But it just felt like I I was like, I never saw myself like in the room as an instructor training one-on-one. It Mm. was this, Mm. it was the joy. Making it suit you rather than trying to fit yourself into a pre-existing mold, Mm. basically. And then the molds are just there to make us all be homogenous and who won't, you know, like that sucks the life out of people. That's right? what I'm, that's what I'm feeling so drained about social media. Mm. It feels like that's what social has become. Mm, it's like really everyone trying to do the things that's working for everybody else. And, yeah. and it's just like, I'm like, mm-hmm. <sighs> but I, know. I feel like even just what you said of feeling okay with like preserving that energy. And like, I see that with you the way that that's what drew me to you in the way that you post, because it doesn't, it never feels like you feel like you have to post. You post when you want to post. Yeah. Like it's so clear. Thank you. Yes. And it's not like you have to do this and you have to show this and this is what I do. And this is my Mm breath. Like, it's just some days there's a few stories. Yeah. Some days there's a few more. Yeah. And the next day there might be one. Like yeah. it's very fluid with, I think, 
not like sometimes like when I don't post, I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> and I'm like, well, wait, no, that doesn't have to be like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be that. But yeah. I guess as a generator, it makes sense. hundred like, percent. If I don't feel joyful to do it, it's probably best I don't. Totally. And that's also what's funny about like, oh, being like a oh, consistent post, like it makes the, the, you'd rather have more shots on target, right? Like in everything in life, that's alignment, right? It's like the fewer correct things that you're putting yourself towards rather than trying to just do, 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 do over and over and over again. Cause then that you're wasting your energy and you're not getting anything back for most of those shots. Right. So it's like the fewer really amazing targeted things. And when you don't post, I'm like, Melissa hasn't posted today. I swear. Well, because I only follow well, I, a few few people. Right. I'm like, okay, I like look forward to when you post, you know? It's true. Yeah. You know? You. And I I'm sure I could like probably speak on behalf of your whole community where it's like it makes you happy when you know what I mean? And then that's your energy, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's so special because I think being in this position of saying we have one life. There's a hundred people outside of me that have this manual of how I should do things. But like, and this one might fail, but let's just see anyway, because I, at least this one's going to be like an adventure. Right. Right. And to see it come through every single time of like, oh no, I don't have to, something as small as I don't have to post every day or no, I don't have to do a lifestyle piece about me for the book. Like I don't want to, I know. or I don't want to post consistently, or I don't want to, whatever things I don't want to do. And I... I just don't do them. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't get less scary, but then the results show themselves really quick. And you're like, oh, this really works. You right. Know? Like, I love that you said it didn't come natural to you to to promote the book or to, you know, connect with people to promote the book. Like, it just didn't feel like you. Oh, God. I mean, the stories are like insane. And I still get it wrong sometimes because I still talk myself into like, no, you should send this person a book. But if that person isn't interested and I haven't been energetically invited, <laughs> it has never worked out. Right. Literally. Books have bounced back. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm like, you cannot do this the way that, you know, that is not your design. And every time I've listened to my design and got my mind to shush, it's not like, oh, it makes sense to me now. I'm going to do my design. It's like, no, no, no. You have two choices. You can try and control this with your mind or you can just do the manual and you will see that the manual will work. And it's just time and time again, every single day that it's never a different manual. You just have to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like the work, the work. It's exactly. The, which leads me to really wanting to know, like, first of all, I'm like, what took you? Because you were living in London mm-hmm. from, well, I feel like a visa sucked you in. <laughs> <laughs> it has the power to just, it is my magical island. You love it. I am in my purest, most elevated essence in Ibiza. Yeah. It just does something to me. And I think it's like the femininity of the island. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it's like the permission slip is just like, I could just run wild and free. Yeah. It's so funny that you say it's feminine because I really do feel like places are either men or women. And I feel like Ibiza is like a kind of spicy grandma but she holds you and she's wise but she like kind of also encourages you to like go out there and be like you said like wild and free and be sexy and like be confident being in your like yes womanhood yes yeah like I feel the most sexy in Ibiza (laughs) I think so yeah no I do like it just does something I can't it's such a magical you know it's the third most magnetic place on earth what are the other two number one is where the pyramids are um, the pyramids are laid over mm. like it's on two different ley lines of crossover how they knew that back in the day we don't know but right. um, that's the most magnetic I think the second one I want to say is Mecca but I could be wrong right and then Ibiza specifically Esvedra is the third I, I mean it, it's, it's crazy like it's there's just something about it mm-hmm. and I've, I mean I've been going for years and it's so funny because there's this part of me where I'm like oh should I explore other parts and I'm like no I just mm. want to go back wow you need to come for like a month next and time I mean, and oh, just I mean, see what happens. Like what could happen in life when you're there for an extended period of time. It's like a drug. Like you just never want to let it go because you're like, oh my God. Is that what happens? Like yeah. you just got mm-hmm. sucked in. Yeah. And does it feel normal to live there? Like I know that sounds kind of crazy, but. um, Well, I've been nomadic for a while before that anyway. And so this was kind of nice because it was the first place that I felt like a real resonance with. I think you are. 
especially, well, in human design, there's also something called the four transformations where if you eat in the way that's correct for you and you put yourself so that's digestion is number one, environment is number two, three is perspective and four is motivation. And you get those things lined up and you become into a genius. Okay. This is advanced level. But mm, oh. um, when you when you digest life the right way, as in taking stuff from the outside world and taking it in, you're doing that in the correct way. So your brain is already turned on. Your environment is about being in the right places at the right times for you to see the things that you're meant to see. Mm -hmm. And then your perspective is noticing from those things the way you're supposed to notice them. And motivation is what it is that gets it out of you, right? So if you do those four things correctly the way you're designed to, that's when you're like, I mean, anyone can be Elon Musk level of, you know what I mean? Like right. that kind of level of achievement and genius and blah, blah, blah. like it's in all of us. Um, but environment, basically what they say is like, it's such a low lift thing because you put yourself in the right kinds of places that are going to pull this, the right things out of you. Like, you know, without you having to do as much, you know right. what I mean? And I really feel like that with Ibiza with me because I just feel like um, it just, it like you said, it just brings out a side of you that, Otherwise, you'd have to work hard in other places to be that same way. So why would you not go towards the heat? Right. You know? I feel it here, though, too. I feel oh. like this place is, is more masculine, but it still has spirit. You know what I mean? It has so dynamism much. and it has spirit and it has that grit and the vibrancy. Yes. I was in L.A. before. And then yesterday I came here and I was like, it's so nice to be in a place where people disagree with each other. <laughs> you know, like people right. tell the truth. Well, in L.A., it's just very. Yeah. What do you feel when you're there? It. Um, I feel like LA is having a bit of a identity shift almost. Mm. I like it though. I have good friends there yeah. and that sort I of love thing. LA. So yeah. Um, I love the lifestyle and, mm -hmm. and I like, I, I feel like I bring my own energy mm, to it. So I'm powerful. not like, everyone's like, oh, you don't feel the energy. And I'm like, I feel like when you're bringing it, it's yeah, with you yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. And it's true as well. You know what I mean? Like you can go to more places when you have that internal buffer and just like be able to stay more yourself. Like going back to the beginning of our conversation, like right. when you know what you are, then you can always like bring that to any situation and you make the situation more enjoyable for you because at least you're 100%. being you and that's what we all want. Right. A hundred percent. But yeah, you'll have to come back at some point. I and, know. And do I, a long... And I, I want to see you when, when I'm there. It'll be so fun. You'll write a book there. You think so? A hundred percent. Because like, no I've been, I think similarly to how like you've said this before, it's not like you felt as if you always wanted to write a book. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've always felt like I wanted to, but like I, I can like feel there's something in there, mm. but I haven't had the space to let it live through me. Mm -hmm. And like, everyone's like, no, you just have to do it. Like, you just have to sit. And I'm like, no, mm -mm. that doesn't work for me. Yeah. Good like, on you. I tried yeah. this summer. I would like go to the beach and it just, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I was like, it's not, the time is it now. I love it. Yes. And also like, you know, there's so many intricacies when you look at how people are built. So some people have, this is like a very small thing, but it's also very big. Some people have a passive brain and some people have an active brain. So um, people who have passive brains, it needs to be pulled out of them somehow. It's not like they can just apply what they have. It's like, I have a passive brain. It's like you have a library back there, but something you need to know what to go and get and when to go get it and everything just goes in. People with, with active brains are like, I know I'm going to need to remember this, this, this I and this. That's my brain. And then they then they know it. But then there's also another intricacy of how does it get pulled out of you, right? Like, what is it? Is it being around other people that pulls it out of you? Again, back to your environment. Mm -hmm. Is it being by yourself? Is it doing it consistently or inconsistently? Will you write in one big burst or will you write it over the course of seven mm -hmm. years? Like every single book has been written a different way, funny enough. And again, right. it comes back to everyone giving you the stock advice. Like, of course. You know, copy paste. Oh, yeah, you just need to sit and do it. It's like, no, but what right. do you mean? Like, you know, I wrote mine in six weeks in Monaco. Wow. Yeah. Um, did you know that you were going to write it or did it just um, come while you were there? So I was invited by my publisher to write. Wow. Yeah. I never sent out a book proposal, nothing. Literally, I, wait, I waited to be invited. Mm. Um, and then they were like, you've got six weeks to write it. And I was like, okay, Taylor, wow. <laughs> sit your ass down next to me. <laughs> and what, what human design is she? She's a projector too. Okay. But she is like a, such a different projector to me because she's very systems and very 
like structure and very, and I'm very like on, I have no idea what I say when it comes out. We have a thousand WhatsApp groups. So I just dump stuff in and I have no idea what I've just said and whatever. That's me. So I'm you probably such have a, a more, yeah. And did you say you don't, you don't email? Like you don't communicate over, I, I don't love I communicating do over WhatsApp. email. I know. Email, I feel like I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I don't it's, know. It's like, it's my least favorite way of communication. Yeah. I'm like text, but now I've gotten, I've like moved over to Slack, which I, I don't mind. Is that similar to, it's like a, it's groups, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah or yeah, yeah. like one-on-one. But for me, like I always say, like, if you can't get a hold of me, like text me. Like yeah. don't email me because sometimes I don't answer emails. Like I used to like going back to kind of being told that we need to do things a certain way. Noah is the type of person who clears his inbox every single night Stop. before bed. And he gets hundreds of emails a day. I mean, he's running so many venues and I've just, you know, I think in some of my pivotal kind of growing years, I ob- observed that and I was like, okay, this is how you do it. Like, this is how, you ha- like how mm. success comes. Like when someone writes, you respond and like mm-hmm. you have to shorten the window. And then one night I was like, I was so drained. It was like 1130 and I'm like answering, e- I'm like responding to emails and I'm like, this doesn't work for me. <laughs> like, yeah. this is not the formula for me. And allowing myself like the space to not respond to people with such urgency all the time is, I mean, first of all, I'm running a business. It's hard. Like I I need to respond to people. People are waiting on me. So like finding other ways to communicate, Mm -hmm. like Slack seems a little bit like Mm -hmm. I can handle that right Mm -hmm. now. Emails are just so like, I get drowning, like drowning, (laughs) right? Yeah. And it's like, it feels like more of a barrier. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like it's more like there's so much time in between. Whereas on a group chat, you can be like, try this. Okay. Love it. Okay. It's more it's, instantaneous. Like it's instant. it's fast. You yes. know what I mean? And I love that. Like being, I feel like it's more effective actually, because it's like, you can just, it's in real time. There's right. none of this like, hope this finds you well. Like with people you, you speak to every day, like, can we just cut out the kind regard? You know what I mean? Like, it's just far, it's just better, you know? Send right. me a screenshot, a yeah. voice note. Like, let's <laughs> yeah. just get into this. You yes. know what I mean? So we have, um, we have a WhatsApp group called Meditations. We have one called Reels. We have one called, most of them, are, literally, I wake up at 3 a.m. with my Invisalign and being like, <laughs> we have this idea for this. You wake and up in I the middle of the them. night yeah. with an idea. And then I say it into my phone and then I put my phone away. No. <laughs> I get so many downloads at night. In the, in, you need a WhatsApp in, in, called Downloads okay. or a Slack called Downloads. <laughs> send it to Great. Send it Great to team. Well, I'll be like, silence your up. Slack, you guys, because my inspiration, my inspiration does come at really random. weird, random times. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, that's a great example of like, it's so small and we're not sitting here wronging email. You know what I mean? I think when I've heard people diss things that don't work for them, it sounds a bit funny because I, if if I was sitting here being like, email is so bad for everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't need that kind of judgment, but no. it's just liberating to hear like, okay, different people doing things in different ways and then right. find yours. Yes. And then what's even better is like, I get to enjoy and like get off on how you do yours and find it interesting when I know my way and you do your way. And I get to like witness, like live vicariously through like the movie of your life whilst also enjoying my movie without thinking that one of us has to be different or we both have to be the same or like compare. <sighs> it's so freeing you Doesn't can just it, like enjoy people I feel like I can breathe deeper like yeah. it's so it's so inviting and it's just like it gives me this look I just feel so invigorated by learning more about this can you share before I dive into because I think it's so amazing how you have an app you have a podcast and you have your books, you have all of these resources for people to connect and in their way of retaining information, Mm -hmm. which is really helpful. Um, What what advice would you give for someone who's maybe listening right now and, and it's just feeling out of alignment, lost, has never, you know, like never heard of this? What is like that first step go to the app and put in your your oh, birth yeah. your yeah where do you look up your design where so do you, look you up? can either um get it on my website which is myhumandesign.com or you download the app that's on android and um app store right um 
I mean, I can't even open an Excel spreadsheet. It's a wonder to me oh, that I have an app. Like, me I neither. Don't oh my, <laughs> I've Excel spreadsheet. I don't even know. Don't ask me to open more than one tab on right. my computer ever or share a screen. I'm like, guys, you cannot rely yeah, on me for somehow that. We're in tech. I don't know. It, isn't it interesting? <laughs> I know. I'm like, it's still a wonder to me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so you can either download the app and put your birth information in or do the same on our website. The one thing is, is that your birth time has to be exact because mm-hmm. it can change a lot of different things if it's like, oh, I think I was born around 4 p.m. or whatever. Right. But if you live in America, it's on your birth certificate, the right. exact time. So then that makes it easier. Um, so that's the first, that's like the entry point to, to learning what your design is. Amazing. What have you felt has been just like the biggest shift from living a life of shoulds to being in this place that you are now? I think I probably felt disproportionately unhappy with life just doing it the way that was like everyone else. Like I remember being a kid and thinking that there was something I wasn't getting because it just, I always thought like what's this all for like what's the point of this like what what's this all for like everyone's walking around not that joyful like Mm -hmm. why is no one happy why is no one why are we just going through the motions like this doesn't like why almost like why what's why do people sign up for this do you know what I mean yeah and so for me I think I always just thought like I'll do whatever it takes that I can really feel like I'm alive. Mm. And so, you know, sometimes there's that like your pain point becomes like the biggest thing that like drives you forward. So for me, I'm like, if I'm not feeling like I love being me, if I'm not feeling like I'm doing something unusual and interesting and then what is like kind of what you were saying earlier, like what's the point? What's the point? You know, it's just not worth it. And the cost is too high for me. I think Mm -hmm. that's what it is. Like the way I can feel so hopeless and sad is just, I don't want to, I'll, I just don't want to go there. I don't want to spend my life there. Same. Um, so it's just take a, take a chance on those random things and then not random. They're the universe showing you where to go. And when you go there, that's like you doing 10% of, which is your part. And that's when the universe is like, look who's on her path let's get behind her. Let's send her all the synchronicities, the opportunities, the things that we can't even make happen. No. Right. If we tried, even if we were so smart. Right. Things that come out of nowhere. Like where does anything come out of nowhere? No. Right. Literally nowhere. Right. So um, that's when things start to align is like not by trying to manufacture your alignment, but by going towards like the heat in your life. Right. Um, And then approaching it with the energy of excellence. Like when you do it, do it as a self that you're really freaking proud of. Do it to Mm -hmm. the parts where like sometimes you want to compromise your integrity to get like the quick, easy cookies. Don't do it. And again, universe goes, look who's showing up, you know? Yeah. And because it wants to use people like that. So right. then it's like it's in the it's in the universe's interest or God or whoever you believe in, it's in their interest to like push you along. You know, it's like okay, great, let's let's move and groove with her. You know, yes. Um, and I think that's how you engage those things where you look back and you're like, I kind of know the steps that I did, but I didn't really. It wasn't really me. You right. Know? That's what I think co-creating is. Oh, it is. Like I feel like whenever people ask me, they're like, "Can you like break down, you know, how this started?" And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, and people are expecting me to be like, well, the business plan. I'm like, I don't even, wouldn't even know where to start with creating a business plan. Yeah. Like that never landed. Yeah. I never wrote one either. No. And still, like, I have no idea where I'm going. No idea what I'm doing. Up shit's Creek without a battle. Do you feel <laughs> that right now? Yeah. You do? Can't tell you what's next. No idea. Really? Yeah. No clue. And feel easeful about it. Totally excited. I like love the, un- the unknown becomes so fun when you know that you know how to handle anything when mm. you, sh- when you've done it enough and you, you kind of know, okay, I've, I've impressed myself with my own choices enough times and I've done the things that are hard or I've moved through the things that are hard. Like I could do that again. And so cool. Let's see. You know, I've always wanted to invent something though. Oh Yeah do something really because I'm like a nerd at heart like I'm like a I'm a science geek at heart I love that and so I um yeah and I'm like okay well if I'm supposed to invent something then I will and if not and do you feel like you you need the invitation well you don't need an invitation to create something okay you need an invitation to share it with people so that's another thing people get it's I'm so happy you brought that up because I think a lot of people think that 
co-creating with the universe or waiting until your gut has had a response or yeah, whatever the you know different thing is for your different design. It doesn't mean doing nothing. And it doesn't mean sitting on your couch and waiting for the universe to kind of knock on your door and for the heavens to open and for a gold invitation to be handed on you by someone right. on their knees. You know what I mean? Like you need to kind of like show up for your, you know, for your path. So you create things for people to come and ask you for, right? Mm. You, you, you stay in that lane of I was just doing readings and then, you know, but if I wasn't doing readings, the answer wouldn't have come to me. Right. You know? Yes. Um, so there's this like balance of, I think this happens a lot in the spiritual world of like, they don't talk about the action part enough mm -hmm. where it's, of course, it's getting clear on your vision and, and getting clear on the inside and doing your inner work. But at, at the same time, it's also like where you learn and where you grow is in the world of matter. We are in a physical reality. So like you have to interact with all these fun, like right. it's like play, we're like rolling in the dirt. <laughs> like it's so fun to like, you know, this is a mic and like, let's see what we can do with it. And this is where the magic happens, right? Like right. So the rubber meets the road here. Like this is so fun, you know, but I think we're so scared of action because it's like push and force and this and that. But instead, if you think about it as play and like interaction and matter, and we get this, like Ugh. angels are jealous of us because we get to like have this like earth experience, you right. know? So that's kind of a different, then action becomes fun, right? I mean, I just feel so excited from everything <laughs> you just said. I'm like, you're like bringing the joy back into it all. It's like, that's what we're meant to, to be feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think paying attention to where you are in your life, if you're not feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With no shame. Zero. Zero. No, shame. because I've been feeling that way. Yeah. And I've and I'm like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Why am I yeah. feeling this way? I'm doing all the things, but I'm like, but yeah. But wait, <laughs> that might be the problem. Yeah. Doing all the things. Yeah. That like I think I need to be doing totally. in this moment right here mm. when I'm feeling flat. I find that so reassuring though, because I think if I think about my 22 year old self and if I was listening to you back then, there's a wonderful um, equality of humans there because we're still always going through the same process. Like even if you've just won an Oscar, you're then worrying about where your next film is going to come from and yeah. if it's going to be as good. Like so, and if even if you're a bajillionaire, you still have to walk on the same sidewalk as other people, right? right? You still go through those challenges. We still have grief and death and loss and all the things that make us whatever. And so it's not like, oh, once I'm successful, like I could imagine my 22 year old self would think you never have a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but I know. But it's so amazing that you are so open about that because I think it's so, um, it's just, it really, it just really um, makes you think that makes other people think that they can do it too, despite all the things that they think are flaws, you know? I, I mean, that's why I share it. And I think sometimes I hesitate because I'm like, I have such a beautiful life. Like I'm so mm. privileged. I have everything I've ever dreamed of. Mm. Yet, like, why am I feeling this, this yeah. way? Mm -hmm. And instead of like wishing that I wasn't feeling that way. I'm like, well, let's get to the bottom of it. And I mm -hmm. think that's what made me just like dive in. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can really say this and I, I swear, like, I'm not just saying this since I've really tapped in. It's like the amount of joy I've just been like adding to my cup every single day is it's life changing. Wow. And I, I swear to you, like wow. of all of the things I've done and I've learned and there's so many things, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing that's connected to me in this in this way. That's why I said to you, I'm like, I actually, I'm going to take your your course, like your courses. <laughs> you have three of them, yeah. right? Like I've already looked them up. <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe this is just, it yeah. seems so random. I'm like, why would I do that? I'm like, because I'm so excited. excited. <laughs> And that's the thing. You don't have to know where it's going to lead. If it's a, if your excitement is leading either way, it's taking you somewhere where you could never even fathom yourself. You just don't know how it's going to add up before it adds up, right? Yeah. That's all of us. That's the mysticism of life. It's like so right. exciting. It's like, why do I want to, why do I want to obsess about, I don't know, this random frequency machine and read about how an autistic person, it will come in handy later. Right. Fine, sure. Yeah. An autistic <laughs> person learn how to read all the frequencies and name them. I'm like, right. somehow fascinated by this. I'm like, okay, I'm going with it. Sure. Like, Okay, it's nothing to do with human design, but my team now know, like, if I get obsessed with something, like, I need to get obsessed with it. You need and to go, like, go with for it. it. Yes. And so, yeah, it's just, 
so much better to not have to explain why we're into the things we're into because we can't even explain them. So like, why are we right. attaching logic to stuff? Is like, you know, it's so silly. Yeah, no, it know? is. It really is. And you're drawn to it, then you're drawn to it. It's the best. I know, it really is. It just <laughs> feels fun, which is just I so, it's like, it feels like playful and yeah, and exciting. So I think that's what we, this is where I think both of us, that's why I'm really drawn to you because you, want to make life fun you want to make every day like I really something do. special you know I really do yeah. like I feel it like with my kid like I'm just like how can I like Aww. be in this day with like letting go of what happened yesterday and it's it's the best what motivates you these are my rapid fire but Ooh. you can you can answer them however you'd like they don't have to be rapid fire I feel like I can't tell you what to do. Um, <laughs> just go in the flow of what feels right for you, okay? What is your biggest motivator when you are feeling down? Do you know what? I love my work so much that I know if I put myself into my, like, my creative zone, my giving zone, right? It's like when we're in our gifts, that's what, that's what we're sharing with other people. I do think there's something to be said for, like, not something when something is really bad happened or something that's really on my mind, but when I'm just in a funk or whatever, I really feel like when you feel like you are the best piece of advice my dad ever gave me. And it's the thing that I think one of the very few things I like take with me every single day is like nothing can give you the self-esteem that feeling like you've done something with your day can like feeling like you've contributed to life in some kind of way. And I just feel like when you feel like you have your lane, your zone, your mission, your whatever, I think it makes proportionately a lot of other things seem so irrelevant, right? you know? Um, and so that's a big one for me. And honestly, just feeling like I get to live in a world that I dreamed of. Mm. Like, I'm like, I'm, this is the most selfish thing for me because I wanted to live in a world where people were like happy and joyful. And you know what I mean? That's what got to me is like everyone just kind of like walking around like zombies and my kid, like my child, like interpretation of the world. Right. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm like getting to like, I'm making this world different. You know you what are. I mean? It's so fun. It's so, so fun. So that really motivates me, you know? And also when I'm down, I now kind of embrace it which makes it lighter. I'm like, ooh, okay, well, we humans came here for all of it. So like, let's lean into the spectrum of like the bluesiness and like so much good stuff is created from like downness or sadness or heartbreak or moves you or it puts fire under your, like whatever. I'm like, okay, maybe there's something here for me. So like, instead of thinking I'm doing something wrong, like let's just like inch towards it, see if it has something for me. And if not, then I'll go away again. But like, right. maybe there's something here to it. Like the tension between the good and the bad and the whole drama of the human experience, you know? That's inspiring. I love it. I love that. When I'm losing, I'm like, ooh, okay. Let's go. Are you emotional or non-emotional though? I'm emotional. You are? Yes. I lean into it. Like I, yeah. I also just like turn off. I, mm -hmm. I like tune out and I just mm -hmm. allow myself to like be there. I don't feel like I have to go out or like have to be with people. Yeah. That's why like when someone's going through a breakup and they're like, what do you recommend? And I feel like a lot of people are like, well, you have to get out there and you got it. And I'm like, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. I think you need to feel the breakup. Yeah. So that you're not bringing that into the next relationship mm. and like really yeah. dismantling kind of yeah. what happened. Like, I think so many people run from themselves. It's so true. And the other thing about emotions is, again, we try to figure out, okay, well, this is why you feel emotions. But it's sometimes the general energy in the cosmos. Sometimes it's something you're picking up from someone else. Sometimes it's a feeling from inside the universe is trying to redirect you. Sometimes it's a fear. Sometimes it's, there's so many inputs for, for the same output. And so, again, to have these like tight rules of like, this is how you do this, or this is how, if you feel like crying, do this. It's like, no. On Saturday, I had this, I was overwhelmed by this incredible sad feeling and I was at a pool, like in a public place and I started bawling, crying. And I was like, you know what? Traditional like ways of being tells me to like go away and hide it and be in the bathroom crying. But when babies cry because they don't have any judgment over it, no one is like weirded out by babies just like crying in public Yeah, because they don't have that. I should be doing it, shouldn't be doing it. They're totally fine. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to cry here and be fine with crying. Mm. And actually when we show our emotions, this is one of the big things of our like mutation in human design is that right now we are very deeply um, tasked with sharing emotions because it helps us bond. So if it I'm does. upset and I show that to you, 
who knows how much closer it could make us, but instead everyone's just trying to show the happy, the happy, the happy all the time or overly perform the the negative stuff. But actually when you're just where you are, you're out in the world, like radiating from your solar plexus, all the things that are going on with you, it draws people and say, oh, you know what? Or when someone's angry and you know it's not about you, you just let them be angry. And then you're like, oh, how interesting. This is a human being angry. Right. Wow. Oh, yeah. how colorful. You know what I mean? So it's actually here because everything else in life would be neutral if it wasn't for emotions. Emotions and our feelings about things are what make life interesting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd just be here and everything would be beige. Flat, right. Flat. So we need the emotions, but we need to reframe how we treat the emotions, Ooh, you know? That That's been so really game-changing for me. That yeah. is so, I also am doing the same, where it's I'm like amazing. leaning into my vulnerability. Because mm -hmm. I also learned through my Enneagram, which I, I want you to take the Enneagram uh, just yeah. to see what, well, you said you were three. I think so, but right. that was one it test. Makes sense. So I, okay. I, like as an active controller, it's like, I'm always, you know, I can handle everything. I've got this. Like, it's my nature to just like be on and, and make sure everything's just moving along. Mm -hmm. But like showing my vulnerable, my vulnerable side, which I have such access to it, but it's like showing it just feels like, mm -hmm. should I not be doing that? And I think too, like also getting comfortable being a presence online, like, I have really gotten to a place where I like get emotional often mm -hmm. on social media. Not that it's like, and cue, now it's time to cry. It's just no, sometimes you can it tell. comes up. And yeah. I'm, instead of like deleting or being like, no, I'm like, I actually am not doing that anymore. And this is who I am. Yeah. And look how many people you help reframe from thinking that is a weakness to seeing that like, no matter who you are, we want, actually, our souls want to feel all those things. They want yeah. to experience it all. It's like fascinating and juicy to us. Like yeah. as souls, that's what we come here for. Yes, I know. It's the best. <laughs> oh, it's the best. Okay, last one, because this podcast is called Move With Heart. What does it mean to you to move with your heart? Um, I think my first thing that comes to my mind is like, putting warmth into something. If you're going to do something, just like put your heart into it. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise yes. don't do it at all. Like you can go through the motions, but why not just like be warm, be mm -hmm. open, be loving, be just yeah. like unapologetically, like just gung-ho about it. Do yes. you know what I mean? Like it's so nice to just not have these like walls up and stuff. You know what I mean? I just yes. think like put the heart out first. Do you know what I mean? When you say that, I'm like, yeah, just like, you know, be warm and, that is and loving. The essence of who you are. Oh, it's thank like, you. It's everything you <laughs> exude. Like you're, I don't thank even you. know how, but you're even more just like delicious and lovable. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I can eat you. You're just so incredible. It's right back at and you. I'm just so happy to like have you here. And I feel like I can't wait to see more of you. <laughs> I'll see right you back at you. <laughs> yes. I know where to find you. Thank you're you. Always invited. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your gifts with the world because you are making a difference Thank in you. the world. You are. <laughs>